Hello beautiful souls. Welcome today to lesson 72. I actually just got back from another group gathering and they seem to be happening more and more, especially as this shift is happening in weather. It seems that people are more receptive and open to listening and following their heart's guidance and, and to truly come together. So beautiful to see everybody doing their part and, and the time really coming for us to co-create and um, do our part here um, to bring forward this new earth through us in whatever way that may be. But I'm finding that uh, the biggest disconnect is the authority problem, <laughs> that people think that they are responsible for the plan, that they think that they're responsible for their connection to God. And so it was kind of interesting to take part in and be present with, also exhilarating and, and beautiful, but also at the same time just more contemplative and, and open to letting the Holy Spirit reinterpret everything that I just experienced and saw. Um, but first and foremost, we really, really, really are coming together, and um, it's absolutely, there's, there's not even any words to express how busy it is over here in Toronto area, and uh, how we're all springing up like beautiful blossoms, and uh, allowing ourselves to claim our part in God's plan for salvation. So with that being said, um, if we are holding grievances within our mind, it is an attack on God's plan for salvation. So first and foremost, we're before we can extend our helping hand in the world, in, in humanity, we must extend our helping hand within our own minds and reach for the hand of Jesus so that we truly can unravel these blocks and, and unravel the, the misperceptions to truly be the vehicle, to be the vessel of God's perfect creation through us. But until we get rid of those grievances, we're listening to the wrong mind and nothing's going to go anywhere. It's going to remain in idle dreams. So with that being said, our thought for today is holding grievances and attack on God's plan for salvation. While we have recognized that the ego's plan for salvation is the opposite to God's, we have not yet emphasized that it is an active attack on his plan and a deliberate attempt to destroy it. Hmm. In the attack, God is assigned the attributes which are actually associated with the ego, while the God appears to take on the attributes of God. So now as I pause for a second, I can even see this related to the experiences that I just had with this group of 15 or more people, um, that that was, that was the difficulty, is that they were assigning the attributes of God to themselves, but then neglecting that God is the source of all creation, that God is the one with the plan that we're here to accept through us. And so because of that, they were still trying to make their place in the world, and they still experienced the duality of life because they're still caught within the confines of their, their lower order reality with glimpses of higher order reality, but still in the lower order reality. And that's totally okay. Uh, the ego's fundamental wish is to replace God, period. Like there was no emphasis of God tonight. The, the ego's wish is to replace God, first and foremost. In fact, the ego is a physical embodiment of this wish. It is. For it is this wish which seems to surround the mind with a body, keeping it separate and alone and unable to reach other minds except through the body which was made to imprison it. Oh my God, so funny, because this was the basis of everything we talked about tonight, was that they were all fixated on the body and raw foods and gardening and, and everything that has to do with the physical body, as if they're idolizing and worshiping this physical body as if it means something, whereas this physical body is a mere vessel for communication, period. Period. We can't put our own thoughts and beliefs of the body on it, and when we do, we're limited this the limit on communication cannot be the best means to expand communication yet the ego would have you believe that it is so that's what it was we didn't even have a full-on communication like we even do in our in our homestead here with with the roommates that i live with which is true co-creation with god and the one i we share um instead it was just ideas flopped around that you know could work or could not work it was literally like meh, meh, uncertainty right which is uncertainty is of ego although the attempt to keep the limitations which a body would impose is obvious here it is perhaps not so apparent why holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. But let us consider the kinds of things which you are apt to hold grievances for. I think that's a good idea. Let's look at the things which we hold grievances for. Are they not always associated with something a body does? <laughs> a person says something we do not like. He does something that displeases us. He betrays us. He betrays his hostile thoughts and his behavior. We are not dealing here with what the person is. 
On the contrary, we are exclusively concerned with what he does in a body. This is what grievances do, right? We are concerned about what someone else does in a body. We are doing more than failing to help in freeing him from its limitations. We are actively trying to hold, hold him to it by confusing it with him and judging them as one. That's exactly it. Um, tonight, people were not seeing past the body to the Spirit and the Son of God. They were stopping on the body and believing that this body could be spiritualized, that this body can be divine. This body can merely reflect the divine consciousness that we accept within our own mind, but that is all. This body of itself has no power. We are actively trying to hold him to it by confusing it with him and judging them as one, thinking the Son of God and the body are one, which is not true. Herein is God attacked. For if his Son is only a body, he mu so must he be as well. A creator wholly unlike his creation is inconceivable. So if we're thinking we're a body, then we're thinking God's a body too. Because there's no difference between God and us. And so either God is an idea, and we're an idea, or God is a body, and we're in a, a body. There's not a joining of those two. They're two totally different levels of consciousness that do not come together. If God is a body, what must his plan for salvation be? What could it be but death? In trying to present himself as the author of life and not of death, he is a liar and a deceiver, full of false promises and offerings, illusions in place of truth. Doesn't sound very nice. The body's apparent reality makes this view of God quite convincing. Yes, the ego does make this view of God quite convincing. In fact, if the body were real, it would be difficult indeed to escape this conclusion. And every grievance that you hold insists that the body is real. So we really think that this body is real. But when we look a little deeper and even take a magnifying glass to the palm of our hand, we'll see that it's moving and vibrating cells and molecules and atoms. That beyond the skin is literally just energy. It's energy. It's dense matter. And so it isn't real at all. It is still perishable like everything else in this world. Therefore, what is real is eternal. Because God is real and God is eternal and he only makes what or he only creates like himself and so anything that is not eternal then it is not real and that goes along with this body too this body is not a reality the body's apparent reality makes this view of god quite convincing exactly in fact if the body were real it would be difficult indeed to dis escape this conclusion and every grievance that you hold insists that the body is real it overlooks entirely what you are brother is. When we stop on the body, we don't see what our brother is. It reinforces your belief that he is a body and condemns him for it. And it asserts that his salvation must be death, projecting this attack onto God and holding him responsible for it. To this carefully prepared arena, where angry animals seek for prey and mercy cannot enter, the ego comes to save you. God made you a body. Very well. Let us accept this and be glad. As a body, do not let yourself be deprived of what the body offers. Take the little you can get. God gave you nothing. The body is your only savior. It is the death of God in your salvation. Crazy. This is the universal belief of the world you see, though. This is the universal belief of the world. Some hate the body and try to hurt and humiliate it. Others love the body and try to glorify and exalt it. But while it stands at the center of your concept of yourself, you are attacking God's plan for salvation and holding your grievances against him and his creation that you may not hear the voice of truth and welcome it as a friend. Wow. So when we believe that we are this body, it's standing in our center, which blocks our communication with God and receiving his plan for us, which is perfect happiness. So this is why it all comes back down to how do I see myself? Do I see myself as a body or do I see myself as a soul? Comes down to that. Wow. Your chosen savior takes his place instead. It is your friend. He is your enemy. 
So either the Holy Spirit is our friend or the body is. <laughs> but only one is real. We will try today to stop these senseless acts on self attacks on salvation. We will try to welcome it instead. I'm trying to welcome salvation instead of attacking it today. Our upside down perception has been ruinous to our peace of mind by having our focus on our body and wanting it to be thinner and wanting it to be healthier and wanting to be not sick anymore and wanting to have more money to protect the body and more clothes for it to wear and more cars for it to drive. <gasps> so much, so much to think about. It's so much to keep within the mind. It's busyness, it's chaos. It doesn't feel very good. But we will try to stop these senseless acts, attacks on salvation we will try to welcome salvation instead. Our upside down perception has been ruinous to our peace of mind. We have seen ourselves in a body and the truth outside us, locked away from your awareness by the body's limitations. Now we are going to try to see this differently. So now we are going to try and see this differently. The light of the truth is in us, where it was placed by God. It is the body that is outside us. And it is not our concern. It is the body that is outside of us and it is not our concern because we are within. To be without a body is to be in our natural state. To be without a body is to be in our natural state. To recognize the light of truth in us is to recognize ourselves as we are. By seeing the light, we recognize ourselves as we are. To see ourselves as separate from the body is to end the attack on God's plan for salvation and to accept it instead. Where this is backwards for the ego. I remember when I first met Tom and I used to say, the ego is my friend. I'm trying to welcome him into my circle of love. You know, this whole idea. But really what we're doing then is we're accepting the body and the ego's idea of salvation, which is sickness and attack, instead of God's plan. So when we recognize that the body is meaningless, the ego is meaningless, is when we can let go of those ideas and then we can accept the whole truth as it is because the ego and the body are merely an illusion of mind. They are not our reality here. And whenever it is accepted, it is accomplished already. So when we accept this truth, it is accomplished already. Our goal in the longer practice periods today is to become aware that God's plan for salvation has already been accomplished in us. To achieve this goal, we must replace attack with acceptance. As long as we attack it, we cannot understand what God's plan for us is. We are therefore attacking what we do not yet recognize. Now we are going to try to lay judgment aside and ask what God's plan for us is. What is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. So we are literally asking the spirit within us. We are asking our soul. We are asking our father, what is salvation, father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. So we're not assuming that we know today. We are asking so we can receive it inwardly. Then we will wait in quiet for his answer. We have attacked God's plan for salvation without waiting to hear what it is. <laughs> <sighs> we have shouted our grievances so loudly that we have not listened to his voice. We have used our grievances to close our eyes and stop our ears. Now we would see and hear and learn. What is salvation, Father? Ask and you will be answered. Seek and you will find. With this is our goal, we will find. We are no longer asking the ego what salvation is and where to find it. We are asking it of truth. Be certain then that the answer will be true because of whom you ask. Whenever you feel your confidence wave, wane and your hope of success flicker and go out, Repeat your question and your request, remembering that you're asking them of the infinite creator of infinity, who created you like himself. What is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. He will answer. Be determined to hear. Don't take what I say for what it is. Ask the Holy Spirit within you to have the experience within yourself, to truly know within yourself in certainty from God. He will answer. Be determined to hear. 
one or perhaps two shorter practice periods an hour will be enough for today since they will be somewhat longer than usual. These exercises are as follows. Holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. Let me accept it instead. What is salvation, Father? Then wait a minute or so in silence, preferably with your eyes closed, and listen for his answer. So you better believe, beautiful souls, that this is exactly what I'm going to be doing today, all day long, right? Is asking, what is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. And take, excuse me, take moments of silence. Take moments of stillness and listen. Truly, truly listen. Listen beyond the thinking thoughts of mind and enter into the space where the answer is found. And we will realize that it is here, the true source of knowing and peace and what we are, and the answers will be found there. So ask for salvation of the one who knows, and we will receive the answer as we listen and receive for ourselves. So with that being said, I love you all. Have a blessed day, and we will talk tomorrow. Bye.